Hey everyone, so today I've been thinking a lot and a bunch of things happened which I might go into detail during this video, I might not, uh, we'll see, but the main thing I wanted to talk to you about today is the potential of applied Aikido philosophy. And a quick recap, if you do not know, I've recently been kind of exposed to a rediscovery of an interest in Aikido philosophy. And that was surprising to me myself. Didn't expect that to happen. I was just recording a video reflecting about the pros and cons of Aikido philosophy, what it's supposed to be, and why I consider it on most levels fails to deliver. And uh, I surprisingly I caught myself feeling like, whoa, actually, you know what? That philosophy, if that would really work, sounds pretty cool. And then I continued to explore it. I recorded a whole video about the idea to explore further the philosophy of Aikido. And I realized I do still apply up to today a lot of what I learned or picked up in what Aikido philosophy is supposed to be. I think it did become a bit of an inherent part of me. And I also recognized that I think I became very destructive after I left Aikido. You know, I just wanted to tear it down and and I think for a good reason. I think that was even, I, I'd like to say that that was the right thing to do because I needed to reconstruct myself. I realized that a lot of my identity was built around uh, external influences. The way I was shaped by the Aikido community that I was a part of, the way I was shaped by my former Aikido instructors. Part of that was me, but also part of that was just picked up material, which wasn't always very healthy, wasn't always very good. And I feel that there was a natural kind of uh, direction to just tear it all down and deconstruct, in a way, to deconstruct myself and to see what's left. Uh, obviously also to add new things, but, but first of all, to kind of level things down and I think I, I succeeded to that to that rear of there's always you know more space to evolve and to continue to learn but I think I yeah I did manage to deconstruct myself and uh, start to build up myself again kind of from ground zero with some inherent qualities or some methods that were so ingrained in me that I found useful and I continued to use but that path, path was primarily destructive. Now, I, uh, for a moment, for a while, I was very negative. I was, you know, bashing Aikido to pieces. And again, I think it was for the good. I think some people needed to hear what I had to say, even if it came from a negative place. But at that moment, I also realized after a couple of months of being at a direct war with some of the Aikido members across the globe, like they were really heavily criticizing me online and I was hitting them back with some videos. I also realized that's not really changing anything because we're kind of fighting on the same level. And one of my favorite quotes from Einstein, he said, a problem cannot be solved on the same level it was created. Which I think part of like your philosophy is like that. And so I kind of needed to shift my level to come from a different place from, then, from where they are coming from. And I think I, I took a rather more, I wouldn't say passive approach, but definitely an approach where I wasn't directly confronting them. I got tired of it, but I just continued my journey. And I thought, you know what? The people who will need to discover that information, that journey will discover it. And there were numerous individuals who reached out to me and said uh, that, you know, that did happen. So I'm very happy about that. It did have positive influence. Uh, but now I, I consider that I finished this, the first cycle of my martial arts journey, and I already reported, said that on record, especially after I did the Aikido versus MMA rematch uh, half a year ago, where, I, where my transformation and evolution was evident. I feel I discovered the initial questions and answers that I posed about uh, my martial arts journey. And I think that's why naturally kind of my inclination to continue to train martial arts started to decline, to, to slow down. Not that 
I'm not interested in martial arts anymore, but it's just, I felt my interest wasn't there anymore because I didn't have those questions, active questions anymore, and I asked myself, you know, what's the next question? And I realized I was always very much about creating positive influence. A, a deep core belief for me, which I keep repeating is, I believe that we are a part of a greater whole, you know, on all levels. And I'm not even like talking spiritual woo-woo, it's just we're all connected. And I, part, I personally believe that it's our inherent responsibility to take care not only of ourselves, but also of others. Now that is a very complicated thing to do because some people take advantage of that. And uh, it's easy to lose yourself in it and or make it into an ego trip where you want to become the savior. So there's a lot of challenges there to go about if you want to really create positive impact. And, and those things are, I'm actively exploring myself right now. I'm actively trying to figure out what are the methodology, what's the methodology of cult leaders? What's the methodology of self-help gurus? So I would avoid that by all means. I do not want to go down that path of repeating the crap that those guys are putting out. And wow, I, I kind of went a bit on this on a tangent, but um, and as always, I don't want to make this video too long, but it's an important self-reflection, I guess. But that being said, coming back to the main subject, um, yeah, so I kind of went for a destructive path. Uh, I deconstructed myself and I feel I am now ready to reconstruct myself. I, I feel a natural draw to look for what I can create rather than I can destroy. And not like create, like, you know, oh, look at me, I created something new. I think that's ridiculous. That's not the way to go. That's again, a path of egocentredness, arrogance, but, but just kind of to see where I can chip in, you know, where I can have positive influence by building something up and supporting something rather than tearing down. And it does mean the tearing down goes away. You know, sometimes you do need to be critical and take a look at something and say, look, man, this is bullshit. Like, come on, you know? <laughs> But also, there needs to be a balance in everything. And I think that's how maturity looks. You know, when uh, I won't speak too much about this, I won't, don't want to expand into too many subjects, but I think that's initially when we get upset about something, the first step, the first step is to you know, shed it away, to kind of look at the negatives of it and later you know when you're ready you start to look at the positives and to see how actually can that be useful and you know I've been in the Aikido world for about 15 years which is a significant amount of time especially since I'm 30 so half of my life and uh, now that I look back there were things which were useful to me and also when I look back I realize you know there was a reason why I, why I felt an initial draw to Aikido there was a promise in it which I wanted to achieve and embody and master. I think I got some of it, but, but the methodology I still up to today believe it's, it's, it's flawed. And that's why multiple people, many people who, who are inherently drawn to Aikido for that reason, to get that promise of becoming a peaceful warrior per se, a warrior who is capable of violence but chooses peace instead and is able to confront himself and others in injustice and etc. That promise is attractive to many, but again, people start training and training in regular schools and systems and they become a part of either a cult mentality or a lack of critical thinking and you know they never get it. But again, I don't want to go there too much. God damn it. <laughs> anyway, coming back to the main subject. These are bells from uh, Cathedral, center of city of Vilnius. So, let's get back to the main question. Can Aikido philosophy, can Aikido, applied Aikido philosophy work? Would it work? So I th I'm thinking about that for a while now, or just like, oh, often, often, constantly, I keep coming back to the idea, and I'm still planning to explore that through the help of various people. There are some individuals who are already helping me out. Hi, Linda. And 
uh, but what, what came out from my explorations is that, that I'm starting to see, the more I look at it, the more potential I see in it. And it's also that this exploration happened in the current uh, zeitgeist, zeitgeist, I don't know how to say it in English, the current spirit of the world or the times of the day where, you know, riots are so, so prominent. Separation between people are so, so prominent. And I feel that this perspective that Aikido can offer could actually be of value. And I mentioned one challenge is when you go into these idealistic paths, it's easy to get lost in the woo-woo and the, and the promise of it, in the soft spiritual side of it and make it egocentric. So I wanna make sure I avoid all of that and it's a tough path. I wanna make sure it's practical. And I think one of the best ways to do that is initially to take a look at how does it work for you? Does it work for you? If it worked just once, that doesn't say much. Does it work for you all the time, consistently, on a repeated basis? That's kind of the scientific approach, evidence-based approach. So that's the first step, testing that out on my own. And then if it works out really well, then looking at, okay, so does it work for others as well? So that's the next stage. But, but the first stage is, I think it's super important because I think that's the self-help group the opposite is the self-help guru path, which I hate, is dabbling around something, looking that it's looking at it sounds good, kind of works, and then starting to promote it and tell others to do it, and that's like fucked up. But I want to make sure it works on me. And so now, finally, coming back to direct value, what I discovered, these bells are going for a long time, damn. Anyway, so Coming back to my own discoveries, I discovered and realized I was applying the, some of that Aikido philosophy already in, in some of the conflicts I was exposed to. Uh, I spoke about that in the previous video, in this line of videos called Rediscovering Aikido, where even in the comments section, sometimes when some nasty comment would pop up, I would be able to not disassociate myself from that person not become enemies, but take a look at, at his perspective and to try to realize where he's coming from and, and kind of discover a, a, con a conversation and a transformative conversation where later on we would actually find some common ground. So I spoke about that. I don't want to say, repeat myself too much again, but I started to look at that at the present moment. So is this working out for me right now? Can I apply it? And, and I'm enthusiastic to say that so far I'm getting quite good results. Now, and the way I do it, let, let me explain it to you. So if I bump into a judgmental state, which it's not a big part of me, I guess, again, from that Aikido perspective, uh, but you know, judgmental states are common. You know, you hear about someone cheating on someone else. You hear about somebody doing something which is way off. And then you want to say like, oh, nasty person, this and that. And again, let's make it clear. It's not about justifying that person or, or saying that it's right what he did. But if I catch myself in, that, in leaning towards that judgmental state, I stop myself and ask myself, so wait, wait. So what about if I would come from his perspective? Where is he coming from? What might have made that person do that? I do the same in some of the comments I still get today. And it's tough. Man, it's hard. It's hard stuff to do that. Gosh, something just fell. I think a bird lost its food. So it's really actually tough to do. Uh, but if I am able to do it, the conversation becomes so different. The relationship with that person becomes so different. Uh, suddenly there's a bridge where I can relate to that person, I can emphasize with that person, and then blend my own perspective with a potential uh, understanding of, better understanding of what that person might be going through. 
and then have a conversation on a very different level or meet that person on a very different level. Because as I said in the previous video, and I don't want to repeat myself too much, so I'll do my best not to do that. Uh, if we disassociate ourselves from another person, if we judge someone else and we're like, oh, he's bad, period. Um, it ruins the relationship. There's no place for any union of opinions. There's no place of communication. There's no place for actual change or transformation. It's, it's dead. All you're going to have is the Einstein situation, which I already spoke about, is the problem cannot be solved on the same level which it was created. So if you're meeting that person on the same level, you're fucked, you know? You're not gonna get anywhere. And also to something really important I wanna stress here, I was hiding here from the sun and the sun found me, so we're gonna have to move. But something really important I wanted to stress is this doesn't, don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean you agree with what the other person says. It's a big misunderstanding. Many people think that if you, if you understand where the other person is coming from and you nod and say, okay, I see what you mean, people think you agree. And that's one of the main reasons I find we avoid, um, I find we avoid um, listening into what another person has to say or trying to understand what he says because we think then, then that then that will mean we agree with that person. Another side of this is uh, we're concerned that that person will think we agree and that way we'll support his perspective and make the situation worse. So we, we generally tend, in my opinion, <laughs> we generally tend to, that's why we tend to disassociate ourselves and become uh, confrontational, become against, because then we're not allowing that opinion to thrive, but also we're not allowing any exchange either. It's the downside to it. And I've been in, in funny situations where, I remember a very specific one uh, was this really like cultish guy. Uh, just at the beginning of when I opened my dojo, he invited, uh, he wanted to meet up with me for coffee. And he was back from Korea and he, he was a part of a religion which believes that there's this Korean guy who is the new Jesus and they had, they're famous or infamous for uh, having mass weddings and, there, and a bunch of like weird stuff he told me. One of the funniest parts was, which is very cultish, uh, I said, so what about, you know, Jesus had superpowers, you know, what about this guy? And the cult guy said, oh well, he has superpowers, the Korean guy has his superpowers, but he doesn't want to show them because then scientists will realize he has superpowers and then they'll lock him down and you know they will you know make an experiment make experiments with him and I'm like but but you know most of the time he was talking he wasn't asking my opinion and I was just nodding because I was I, I, I you know I, I was like okay I see what you mean I see what you mean I'm like oh yeah it's like uh, and it wasn't like, it makes sense. I was just like, okay, I can see what you mean, uh-huh, okay, okay. And so I was kind of nodding my head there. And, but after like an hour of him just talking in this monologue with me, uh, he said, so now that I see that you agree with me, are you interested to learn how to join our movement? And I was like, wait, no, dude. <laughs> I did not say even one word that I agree with you. I was just nodding because I see what you mean, but I don't agree with anything you said. And he was like surprised and shocked because he, he, he thought my nodding means yes. So, so we're not, you know, we're not going there, but, but uh, my camera is running out of time. So let me restart. So as you see, it's a very complicated space to, to go around. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, I'm talking here in tangents. But as well, I, I wanted to make this on record since it's an active exploration and hopefully some of it is useful for you, but uh, to make sure it delivers value, this, this, this solo conversation. Um, 
let's get back to the main question. You know, it's, does is what I applied a keto philosophy work? So so far, my inclination is to feel like it could. It does. I see the potential in it. I see some of the effects it has on me, and I'm I'm quite happy with some of them. Some of some of the things which are happening. I feel how my relationship to some people changes. My my response changes. It becomes more potent. And, and creating active change without you know any forcing. Uh, I do have to admit that some situations are still like whoa, they're like you know tough cookies. And in particular, the one I was thinking a lot about today was my relationship with my previous like you know instructors. And I think I'll, I'll give you an interesting example which might better help you understand what I'm talking about again so you know if two children get into an argument then uh, probably not it's not going to be very constructive they're just going to scream at each other you know and kick each other and that's that's the end of it uh, unless if we talk about children unless one of the children is more mature and kind of steps back and says you know what actually like like a bigger brother versus smaller younger brother you know the younger brother starts to starts to cry and the bigger brother says oh actually you know what I'm sorry dude that's my bad you know take the toy you know he kind of steps to a different level or or says something else whatever that would be Um, if we take a mature adult and a child if a child does something bad a mature adult will understand you know this is just a child he does he doesn't have a clue what he's doing he relates to him. He has that empathetic, empathetic uh, relationship, and he can go to him and say, "Look, I understand you're hurt because uh, you know I took away your your, your toy, but you know, this is for the best." And he, he searches for a way to communicate. He talks with care because he understands the child is you know he's not mature enough. He doesn't have the experience to understand what he's doing wrong. And it's an adult's uh, it's, it's an adult's uh, responsibility to come from a different place of maturity, and to understand where the child is coming from, but also to talk to him, you know, and to take care of him. An immature adult that happens too will you know will become will go to the same level with the child. They're going to scream at each other, and you know, and that's stupid. That's not getting anywhere. This is, in my opinion, it's bad education. The child says, why can't I do this? The adult says, because I told you so. It's like, okay. If a, if a person, if, a, if an adult becomes uh, personally uh, insulted, you know, by a child, by what a child says, that's an immature adult. He doesn't understand that it's a child. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But, you know, funny thing is what we don't realize often is that the same applies to adults, adult versus adult. Um, you know, if you look at the other, if there's a mature adult and a mature adult, the mature adult looks at the other person and understands, you know what, that other person has a lack of understanding. He doesn't have the right education mentality. And not, I'm not talking about this in a patronizing way or, or superiority way. No, actually you're, you're emotionally, you're with that person on the same level. But, but you also have the wisdom to look at that person and think, okay, well, shoot, you know, he does not know what he does not know. So how can I approach him then? Instead of the mistake we do with adults, too often we, we expect them to know better. We're like, you know, this is obvious, you're, you're stupid. You know, this is obvious, this is bad. Like, why the hell are you still doing it? What the hell are you telling me? There's no transformation there but if I talk from a place which is mature if I come from a place there's there to change so now the reason I'm saying this to you is because it's easy to do it's easier to do with children because you know it's more evident that they don't have the, the appropriate knowledge and you're the adult etc it's much more hard already to do that with adults because we expect them to know better. Um, but there's another level with some people it's still easier to do when, than with others. 
and the difficulty happens when you think about people who have had direct impact on your life, especially negative impact. So for example, a hurt, a hurt relationship, you know, a, a breakup, or a hurt relationship with a former uh, mentor figure. And out of respect for the different people, you know, I don't want to talk too much about them in detail. But uh, just to give you a hint, I thought I went through this process of kind of I like applied a keto philosophy in my mind with my um, ex-wife. And not to say I don't have more internal work to do, but but I felt a change in how I feel about her. Not like me wanting to get back together. I still see that the, the relationship was, in my opinion, toxic. But, but just as a human to human being, the, the, the personal stuff went to the second side and I look at that relationship and I feel like there's there's more space to care for her, just as an individual, you know, who had together a connection for years. Because beforehand, there was a strong inclination to just really feel against her, oppose her, to make her into an enemy. I did my best not to, but a lot of my a lot of me did. And there was no, there was not much space for care. I did care on some level, but. On the surface, there was more, you know, anger and negativity. And now, after I went through that process, or as I'm going through that process, I feel it wasn't easy, but I feel, you know, it's it, my my internal relationship with her changed. Uh, the more tougher cookie is my relationship with my former Aikido instructors. I actually still haven't released a video I spoke about my first relationship with my first Aikido instructor. There was a lot of shit there, which you don't know about. I guess I'd never spoke much about it. I might release that video. I'm still a bit hesitant. But you know a bit about my relationship with my former Aikido instructor. I don't talk too much about it, but I talk about it sometimes. And, and that's like still a tough cookie and I tried to go for the applied Aikido approach with him in my mind, you know. And man, oh man, it's not easy. I feel there's some breakthroughs, but I feel the mind resisting. There's that fear which I spoke to you about before. The fear that if I, internal fear, subconscious fear, that if I will come to terms if I will kind of lose my negative, direct negativity, personal, personally driven negativity towards my Aikido instructor, that it will validate what he does or what he did. And there's a strong desire not to do that. I think a lot of things he did or is doing are bad, and I don't want to support it. And I don't want that thing to happen where I understand where he's coming from and that validates him. So there's that internal fear, but but I understand I also need to do this, at least for myself. And the crazy part is, the reason I thought about it so much is one of my former students connected up with me today and he's, he said, he heard that my former Aikido instructor wants to talk, wants, no, he's waiting for me to reach out to him. And I don't know the details, this is only hearsay, but you know, that to me personally that sounded very arrogant. No, it sounds like it's it, to me. There's an impression that it comes from that superior place of, oh, you know, Vokus is lost, and one day he'll understand what he did wrong, and he'll come back to me. I'm not sure if that's the case, but it feels like it. And my response to my former student was like, look, if my former Aikido instructor wants to connect up with me, a mature person would do that directly. He wouldn't be telling others. He's waiting for me to connect up. I think that's, you know, that's a bit douchebaggery. Well, one more sign that, one more reason for me not to in connect up with him myself. And I thought about it like, you know, 
should I? And I realized, no, I, again, I don't want to validate what he does. And I'm concerned. First of all, I don't have anything to say to him aside from my criticism, you know, what I consider to be constructive feedback, but it's, it may very well be like negative criticism, negative feedback. And I know from our past conversations, he's not very welcoming for that. But that's most of the stuff I have to say to him before anything positive would come out of that conversation. And I don't think he wants you know, to engage in such a conversation. And, uh, or at least he didn't show any signs he wants to. I think as a mentor figure, it would be mature for him you know, to, to be curious about such a thing. He knows I feel strongly negative about many things he does. So I think it would be mature for him to reach out and say, look, Lucas, maybe I don't agree with you, but you know, for, it would make sense for him to do that Aikido approach, to, to reach out and say, look, maybe I, I'm not sure if you're right, but I want to really understand if I did something wrong. The last conversation we had, he, he didn't do such a good job at listening to what I had to say, and that's where pretty much the conversation ended. And he never, there was never even one word afterwards about that anymore. So there's no intention in me to reach out to him first. Like there's no, nothing I have to say to him unless he would be interested, unless he would show interest. And yeah, I don't want to validate what he does. Um, but I went on a tangent, I guess, but yeah. But, but I heard that, my, that, that, that kind of, I guess, is out there. And I started thinking a lot about, you know, my relationship with Aikido instructor. And I felt, I realized that how negative I feel about that negative I feel about him and I, th I thought okay I'm exploring the applied Aikido philosophy so this is a great opportunity let's do this and then I felt it's so hard but I stood I did start to feel it's breaking down at certain places like I am able to crumble some of that negativity and not to validate him but but to, to come to a place where and I go to a different level and I look at it and I feel like, man, okay, you know what? I, I personally consider he's, he, he is misguided. I personally consider you know, he lives in a self-supporting environment which makes him believe he is right, which does not help him point out his own flaws. And I, you know, I could talk and talk, but I said, I don't want to talk too much on record about what I think about him, you know, it's more between him and me. But the reason I want to talk about this is because I, I'm sure that there's a lot of people who feel the same way like I did, not about him, but just about the same dynamic. And I wanted to share that as I went through that applied Aikido philosophy, I started to feel, you know, it's hard, it's very hard, but there is somewhat of a glimpse that I can transform it internally, again, not to validate what he says, but at least to remove that negativity from me, that I want to say this in the best possible way, but to look at it as, a, as an adult relating with a child, to be like, you know what, man, that's fucked up what he got himself into, but it, it's not going to help if I will simply look at it and be like, you know, it's, he's a douchebag, he's a douchebag. It's also not going to help if I go on an ego trip and try to be his savior and be like, oh, now I know the truth and now I know what you're doing wrong and let me, you know, tell you. It's like, that's one of the reasons, again, why I'm not going to write to him because if I would write to him, mainly I would go down that path you know, to criticize him without an invitation. But the internal process, I feel it's important. And one more thing, I, I it's, you know, it's very honest, but I guess I'm, you know, well known for my honesty. <laughs> um, one more reason, what made me really think about the subject was because when I was, when my former student wrote to me and I started uh, recording a message back to him. Uh, 
about partly concerning my relationship, my relationship with my former teacher, I felt how many emotions, how, how emotional I was as I was talking about him. And this is not the first time it happened. You know, I, I, there's so much emotion there. Like now I'm talking to you like I'm okay, mostly. But there's some things which I still talk about and it's just like, oh my God. It just, there's stuff there which I haven't addressed, which I haven't resolved. And a lot of me does not want to look at it. But the thing is, for my own good, it doesn't help. Because it's still there somewhere in the back of my mind. It's still there. It's, I'm, I'm sure it's somewhere still bothering me and limiting me. And I don't care so much, you know. I, I don't care if I resolve anything with him directly. It's not about that. You know, it says he has his life, I have my life. We don't have to be buddies. But internally, I feel it's very important to do that. To remove that heavy burden, that heavy weight. I think I'm giving you a terrible video because I'm facing the sunlight. Well, I'm about to finish. So, big talk, huh? You know, not all of you are willing to listen to this whole talk, but I think some this journey is universal and some of you might you know, have value from it. I also have value for, from it. But these, these are the things I am talking about. And just, I guess, coming back and just saying a few last words about applied Aikido philosophy, Again, I will say I do see potential and I do say it's a very tough cookie just realistically to do. You know, it's so much easier to avoid doing this. It's so much easier to blame someone, to judge someone, to avoid someone. Like a neighbor you don't like, you know, you wait until he goes down the stairs until you open up your door. But it also limits your life because you have to wait until he goes down. And so yeah, applied Aikido philosophy, it's a tough cookie, but also I like to say that rarely the right path is the easy path. And the fact that this is hard to do actually shows promise more than the opposite. The fact that it's hard to do shows that there might be something there which has realistic value. But the danger is to not make it self-help guru, woo-woo, cult. And that's a tough cookie to handle too. I like cookies. <laughs> I don't really actually like cookies. I was about to say I like cookies because I say cookies so much today. So yeah, let's see where this keeps going. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm curious to hear. Your comments also, I like to point out your comments do mean a lot to me, especially when they come from a sincere, honest, and curious place. Um, I read your comments and they make me reflect about my own process. I get insights sometimes which I haven't thought about. I'm like, oh crap, well, this, is, this is good shit. You know, I, I can learn from this. And it makes me confront my own thoughts and reestablish myself in some way. So, comment. Don't hesitate. I appreciate it. And I think, yeah, it's time to go back home and this is not the end of the process. And I'm, I'm planning to talk to many individuals about this because one of my preferred ways to gather information or self-reflect is as you see through conversations with myself or the camera and with other people. So that's going to happen. It's going to be fun. Not easy, but fun. So stay tuned and keep questioning and I'll see you later.